Hi guys, uh, welcome back to DroneMe and today on the video I will be telling you something interesting about this drawing GPS. So I am having this U-Vlogs uh, Amaten GPS with me. So typically this is used uh, on the drone. I use this with this Pixar flight controller and I build drones. So what basically the application of this GPS module. So GPS modules are basically used for autonomous flight. Uh, suppose you want to plan a flight plan. So we load the flight plan into flight controller. And because of the GPS, uh, it uh, follows that route and autonomously fly because it knows where to go. Okay, again for hovering, suppose you want to hover at a single point, uh, but in practical conditions, what happened? Winds are there. Okay, suppose wind is blowing in this direction, then that what will happen? The drone will drift. But what GPS will do? GPS will know that my position, my coordinate is changed. So it will first of all check uh, if that command is given by pilot. Command is not given by pilot means this is external force. Then what GPS will do? It will send the autopilot a command that come back to the original location. By this way, the drone will hold its position. Again, uh, for uh, autonomous landing, okay, autonomous landing, uh, GPS is used because whenever you give land command and you feed a landing coordinates, drone will go there directly and then it will descend and land. So basically. Uh, GPS reduces the workload of the pilot. So this was about the drone GPS. But in case of commercial trends, so commercial flights are also having GPS receivers on them. So because of the GPS receivers only, the plane can know its current location and then it can navigate through the given waypoint mission. So there are multiple GPS receivers on the plane for redundancy because if any GPS stay, then system can switch to another GPS and still it can continue with the flight. Suppose all GPS fake, suppose GPS jamming is done and all GPS are not good. Then what will happen? There is an INS system into the aeroplane. It is basically inertia navigation system. So it is a combination of few sensors like uh, accelerometers and gyroscope. How it works is basically whenever uh, the plane is on the ground, the current position is trained into the INS system. The current position may be measured by use of a GPS or any other navigation aids that can be fed into and as soon as the plane starts moving. This acceleration will be measured with this sensor and this acceleration will be integrated over time and then you will get the current velocity and current position of the arrow. Consider INS also, INS is also fed there. There are multiple VOR stations available on the ground. So VOR stands for VHF Omnidirectional Range and VHF means very high frequency. So it is very high frequency omnidirectional range. And it is a ground based navigational aid. VOR operates between the frequency of 108 MHz to 117 decimal 95 MHz. And it is a short range navigational aid. So uh, it has a range between 35 nautical miles to 140 nautical miles depending upon VOR station. And it works within line of sight. It provides to basically the bearing of aircraft with respect to selected VOR station. And except few VOR stations, almost all of the VOR stations are aligned with magnetic north. And often they are coupled with DME, that is distress measuring equipment. So if a particular station is equipped with VOR and DME, so it can give you your bearing and your distance with respect to the selected VOR station. And this is a symbol for DME. This is a symbol for VOR as a symbol if a particular station is having VOR and DME coupled together. And this is a symbol for TACN that is Tactical Air Navigation. On the left side you can see the navigation display of Airbus 320. On the right side you can see the Jepson approach plate. On that you will get information of VOR station. So for example this is a Mumbai VOR and it has a frequency of 116 decimal 6 megahertz. And this is identifier, bravo, bravo, bravo. And this is a most scope. So if you want to use this Mumbai VOR for navigation, you have to first select VOR mode and you have to enter this frequency 116.6 into radio nav page of MCDU and then you will get your information of VOR on this page. Let us understand how VOR works. So VOR ground station starts with two types of signal, directional signal and reference signal. The aircraft viewer receiver captures both the signal and it measures the difference between both the signal in order to calculate the bearing of the aircraft with respect to the station. This is also called as a radius. So in all there are 360 radius. That means at each degree one radial is there. So for example this is a radial 
टू फोर जीरो दिस इज अ रेडियन जीरो फोर फाइव एंड दिस इज अ रेडियन वन एट जीरो सपोज यू आर फ्लाइंग एंड इफ यू डोंट नो यूर करंट पोजिशन देन वी आर स्टेशन कैन गिव यू द रेडियल ऑन विच यू आर फ्लाइंग एंड द डी एम यू कैन गिव यू डिस्टेंस ऑफ द एयरक्राफ्ट फ्रॉम द स्टेशन सो विद बोर्ड डिटेल्स यू कैन गेट यूर करंट पोजिशन देर आर टू इम्पॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट दैट इज आउट बाउंड एंड इनबाउंड सो इफ यू आर फ्लाइंग अवे फ्रॉम द स्टेशन इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ आउट बाउंड एंड सपोज यू आर फ्लाइंग टूवर्ड्स द स्टेशन इट इज कॉल्ड एज अ इनबाउंड नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट कंसेप्ट इज वी ओ आर सी डी आई एल ओ बी एस आर कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम एयरक्राफ्ट हेडिंग सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल करेंटली यू आर क्रॉसिंग द रेडियल वन वन जीरो बट यू आर हेडिंग्स टूवर्ड्स वन एट जीरो सो वी ओ आर रेडियल एंड यूर एयरक्राफ्ट हेडिंग आर कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट सो इन ऑर्डर टू दैट पर्टिकुलर रेडियल वॉट यू हैव टू डू यू हैव टू फर्स्ट फ्लाई टू दैट रेडियल एंड देन यू हैव टू ट्रैक दैट रेडियल लेट से एट सी टेल्स यू टू फ्लाई रेडियल थ्री वन जीरो इन बाउंड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू फ्लाई ऑन दैट रेडियल एंड देन यू हैव टू ट्रैक दैट रेडियल इन बाउंड अज्यूम अनारियो इन विच यूर जी पी एस एंड वायर इज नॉट वर्किंग एंड यू वॉन्ट टू लैंड यूजिंग वी ओ आर अप्रोच फ्रॉम एरोटिकल चार्ज यू कैन गेट द इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ नियर बाय वी ओ आर स्टेशन यू विल गेट दिस रेडियल्स दैट यू नीड टू फॉलो इन ऑर्डर टू लैंड ऑन दिस एयरपोर्ट सो वॉट यू कैन डू इन इसे दी यू विल एंटर द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ यूर वर्ल्ड इन टू यूर एन सी डी एंड यू विल फ्लाई दिस रेडियल वन थ्री फाइव आउट बाउंड Once you reach on VOR two, you will enter the frequency of VOR two, and then you will need to try this radial zero five zero outbound. Once you reach on uh, VOR three, you have to enter its frequency, and then you need to try this radial one one zero, and you need to land on airport. This is how you can use VOR for navigation. So this is VOR procedure in order to land on the runway thirty two of Mumbai Airport. So consider you need to do overhead approach. So you need to follow this radial one six one till point nine point five DME. At nine point five DME, you need to do level turn till point seven point five DME. At seven point five DME, you have your final approach pitch. That that means at this point, you need to make sure that you are at correct altitude and at correct bowel. Then you need to start descending in order to land on this runway, and this will be your descent profile. So here you can get a distance and altitude that you need to follow. Add particular DMM resources. In case of missed approach, you need to fly this radial three to one outbound, and you need to follow this. Climb straight ahead to twenty six hundred feet, then climbing turn right to join your holding at thirty eight hundred feet, or as instructed by ATC. Apart from this, radar can be used for navigation. For landing, we use ILS systems. Okay, so different navigation systems are there, which uh, pilot. What I will do, I just want to check. This is just out of curiosity. I want to check if the GPS can work into a commercial flight because generally our drone flies like thirty to forty meter per second speed, and we send the drone max to max one kilometer of altitude. But in case of commercial flight, they fly like two forty to sixty meters per second. That is almost nine hundred kilometers per hour speed, and they fly at ten uh, thousand. Meters, okay, it's like it is like ten kilometer to twelve kilometer of altitude. Would it step if this receiver can measure such a high values, and can it give me my current location, my current altitude and current speed? That I will check. So tomorrow I am having my flight, and uh, what I will do, I will carry uh, the Spixog and GPS receiver with me, and I will do one test. Uh, so guys, right now I am into flight. connected my gps module with pixsock and what i will do to get proper gps satellite uh, coverage i will uh, hold my gps module towards uh, window okay i will just connect to mission planner and i will get back to you so let's connect the flight controller to mission planner and so we have connected right now and the ardo pilot is initializing So let's wait for some time, and we are connected right now, and we are getting the artificial horizon information as well. 
So right now we are connected with satellites as well because we started to get our position information over this map. And you can see the motion of the aircraft. And we are currently moving towards southwest direction. Over here you can see some of the important parameters like first of all the number of satellites. So we are connected with 16 number of satellites and the HDOB will be 0.8 that is horizontal dilution of precision. Any value below 1 is considered to be very good value. Here you can see the latitude and the longitude of the aircraft. So latitude and longitude of this location is this and it is continuously changing as per the motion of the aircraft. Over here you can get some of the important parameters like first of all the altitude. So we are flying at 11,200 meters of altitude and it is changing. Uh, if I convert this value into kilometers, so it will be something 11 kilometers. So we are flying at 11 kilometers of altitude. Next is a distance to home. Uh, we took off from Jammu airport and this is a distance of this location from Jammu airport. It is into meters. So if I again convert this into kilometers, it, it will be something around 940 kilometers. Okay, so we are something around 914 kilometers from Jammu airport. Here is a ground speed. So it is 246 meter per second. Again, if I convert this into kilometer per hour, it will be something around 900 kilometers per hour. So the speed of the aircraft is 900 kilometers per hour. Here you can see some of the important parameters like artificial horizon, attitude and bank angle. But I will not trust these values because currently I have hold my flight controller into hand. To know these values, you have to install the flight controller exactly uh, aligned with the axis of the aircraft. But since I have hold the flight controller in my hand, so these values will not be correct. But we can get the heading information. So we are heading towards 201 degree. So same you can see here, this red line shows the heading of the aircraft. Over here you can see pre-arm warning, radio fail safe. Uh, because right now we are not connected with radio, that's why it is showing pre-arm radio fail safe warning. Again we are getting few errors like uh, error position variance, error velocity variance. This is because whatever the data captured by the sensor, there is a variance between the sensor, sensor data. That's why we are getting this variance error. Uh, again the EKF. The EKF is changing the color. Sometimes it is changing into orange color. Sometimes it's changing into red color because whatever the data captured by the sensor, there is a discrepancy or inconsistency between the sensor data. That's why it is changing the color. So it is basically extended Kalman filter EKF. So it is very important concept that is used in aviation and drone industry. If you are interested into this, just write down in the comment section below. So I will create a separate video on extended common filter. So in all the drone GPS perfectly works into aircraft and uh, with the use of this drone GPS I can get my current location, uh, my current altitude, ground speed. This basic parameters you can get. So guys after landing I talked with the pilot so he told me that they use the GPS data for primary source of positioning. Again in case the GPS fail failure they use IRS system that is Inertia reference system. In case both system fail, uh, there are multiple ground stations on uh, ground stations are there which are called as uh, VOR stations. From that they get their positioning. Again, they can connect with the ATC and ATC can get their information by using the radar and then they can communicate their location to the pilot. Okay, so all these equipments help in the navigation of the aircraft. So I ask him in case of if, if all uh, instruments fail and if any passenger is having a GPS like a drone GPS or any commercial GPS with him can he help uh, the pilot with the position data uh, captured by this GPS module so pilot told me that no they will not use this data because they are strict with their procedures so in case of all instrument fail what they do is they are having a visual reference charts with them so it is like a map okay and on the map there are different uh, annotations are created so what they do, they first of all descend to a lower altitude so that they can visualize the ground. They try to find out uh, landmarks on the ground like some bridge, uh, some big buildings or uh, some rivers they try to find out. And similar references, they, are try, they try to relate on the 
reference chart and from that day get their current location and they then they navigate towards airport and they land a uh, aircraft so one day i was traveling and it was a long route flight so i just wanted to land as early as possible but that time i was not having any uh, position data okay so that time one idea came into my mind uh, if i am having a drone gps with me so i can relocate myself and i can get idea of uh, how much more time i will take to land a aircraft from that idea i made this video just out of curiosity uh, so guys i hope you really like the content of this video if you like the video please subscribe to my channel and please share this video with as many as people possible and as always happy flying